In church against state in Ireland, politicians face up to the sensitive issue of abortion in the predominantly Catholic country. Landmark legislation will allow abortions in limited circumstances, but will it resolve the wider debate? This is Inside Story. Hello and welcome to Inside Story. I'm Stephen Cole. After decades of delay and months of argument, Ireland is revisiting the divisive issue of abortion. The Irish Parliament has been debating a bill allowing limited abortion for the first time. The Catholic Church opposes all forms of abortion, believing in the sanctity of life, but Ireland has been coming under increasing pressure to clarify its own position and also to provide answers to supporters of both sides of this debate. In 1992, Ireland's Supreme Court ruled abortion should be legal where the mother's life is at risk. That ruling followed the case of a 14-year-old girl who was denied an abortion after being raped. And Ireland's laws faced further global scrutiny in October last year when a 31-year-old Indian woman died after allegedly having a request for a pregnancy termination refused. When I went uh, back, uh, you know, with the remains of Savita, uh, everyone in the family asked me how could this happen in a country like Ireland. They just couldn't believe it, you know, that the faith or the religion came, you know, first before someone else's life. It was this case that led to the drafting of the Protection of Life During Pregnancy Bill. And this allows for a termination when three doctors unanimously agree there is a real risk to the life of the mother. It also permits abortion if one obstetrician and two psychiatrists unanimously agree a pregnant woman is at risk of suicide. Some lawmakers believe this latter clause is open to abuse. While other critics say the legislation fails to address issues such as rape or incest and when there is a fetal abnormality. Let's bring in our guests. In our London studios, Anthony McCarthy from the Society for the Protection of Unborn Children. In Dublin, Sarah Malone, spokeswoman for the Abortion Rights Campaign. And also in our London uh, Broadcast Centre, Peter Williams from Catholic Voices, a global network seeking to promote the church's image. Welcome to you all. But first, to Anthony McCarthy. The abortion debate is raging in Ireland, not least in Parliament. Also uh, around the world, in Chile and the United States, about whether a pregnant woman should be allowed to kill the fetus and at what stage or duration of the pregnancy abortion should be allowed. Do you see this as a medical issue, uh, Anthony, or a direct challenge to the Catholic Church? Well, I certainly don't think that it's a medical issue. Uh, we've just heard in England and Wales, 97% of the abortions carried out are for social reasons. Uh, that's generally admitted across the board. Uh, is the deliberate destruction of a new human being in a pregnant woman medicine? Is that in line with Hippocratic principles? It seems not. So I think we're not really talking about uh, medicine at all. We're talking about a social problem, a view about uh, human life, human choices, uh, a view about the sexual revolution, um, and, and a, an attempt to basically undermine ideas of the sanctity of life. Um, and in so doing, obviously, uh, the church, the Catholic Church, is, is undermined, but all of us are undermined. Uh, anybody who cares about human rights applying to everybody is undermined by those who would push for abortion. Peter Williams. You speak for Catholic voices around the world. How do you see the global Catholic community in their approach to abortion? Is there unity on the issue? There certainly is unity because the Catholic Church's teaching has been consistent from its very inception. Uh, we see in the very first few centuries of the Catholic Church its continual affirmation that the individual human being should never be murdered, should never be killed. And that's why when you look at uh, documents such as the Didache or St. Clement of Alexandria or any of the early church fathers, there's a total unanimity that abortion is seen as the ending of a human life. It's not merely just another uh, operation that someone might go into. But I think the problem uh, worldwide is that the church's teaching and the implications of that teaching have been 
mischaracterized uh, by many people. For example, in the Savita case, the idea was taken that the Catholic Church's dogmatic position on this subject in Ireland uh, caused the death of Savita. The truth is, of course, that Savita died of an E. coli infection that had absolutely nothing to do at all uh, with having an abortion or having um, a, a, a termination of pregnancy. Neither of those would have stopped the E. coli infection from working its way and killing her. So the fact is that the church's position is totally consistent. It's actually based on philosophical and humanitarian principles that every human being has the right to life and every human being should have the protection of their right to life from conception till natural death. That's when the human being begins to exist until they stop existing. So that's the consistent teaching of the Catholic Church and uh, that's what we affirm consistently. And uh, Sarah Malone, um, you won't agree with Peter, will you? Uh, yeah. Uh, so uh, I, I want to ask you to not. react to Peter and then I want to ask you another question on the back of that. Of course, that's fine. Um, it absolutely is a, a medical issue, a medical care issue. That's the reason that this legislation has been brought forward. In, it is already legal in Ireland to have an abortion if a woman's life is at risk. And I have to say, it doesn't show very much respect for the sanctity of life if you would deny a woman an abortion, even if, her li even if she would die without one. And that's what this legislation deals with, exclusively with an abortion if there is no other way to save the life of a woman. So that absolutely is a medical issue. And we're not talking about social abortion here. We are talking about abortion if the, the alternative is that the mother and the unborn child with her dies. Um, so I would say that that is absolutely untrue. And then I would move on to the case of Civita. Dr. Peter Boylan, who reviewed the evidence in Savita's case, there obviously was mishandlings pointed to in her care, but it was also said that lack of legal clarity meant that doctors were not sure when a risk to health became a risk to life, that there is no medical basis for differentiating between those two, but the fact that our law currently does meant that their hands were tied until it was far too late to save her life. Um, also, our government has an obligation after a judgment from the European Court of Human Rights to clarify this law because it was found that in practice, even though women are entitled to an abortion when their life is at risk, that in practice they do not receive it. And we saw that well, with Savita. We've seen that with cases that maybe were not as well known outside okay, Ireland. Okay, well, you've, you've addressed... Several, uh, you've come back to Peter on both not those sure. issues. But I wonder, uh, staying mm -hmm. with Sarah, has abortion been, uh, if you like, a grey area in Ireland, legally anyway, since 1992, when the Supreme well, Court ruled that abortion should be allowed if the mother's life was in danger, but the law itself wasn't adjusted? Well, no, well, the Supreme Court, I mean, it, it is their role to interpret our Constitution, and that was their interpretation of our 1983 amendment, which guarantees equal rights to an unborn as to a mother. And I would say the legal situation since that point has been very unclear, because, uh, as I mentioned earlier, there is no medical basis on which to differentiate between risk to health and risk to life. When does one become the other? And it's the waiting that is the problem there. That's what happened with Savita. When she arrived into the hospital, she was miscarrying, but had no infection present and because there was a heartbeat still with the fetus even though her termination the uh, miscarriage was inevitable she was told that because of the law that uh, they unless there was a real and substantial risk to her life as opposed to her health that they couldn't act and oh, by the time that risk became bad enough to be a risk to her life there was no way to save her anyway okay uh, Peter I'll come back to you in a moment but I want to go to Anthony first uh, Anthony McCarthy is the time right we've heard uh, from Sarah Malone uh, or also myself about this being a sort of grey area at the moment uh, legally is there a need from the Irish Medical Council not least perhaps Parliament to provide new guidelines on just when there is a need or a legal need uh, for medical intervention in order to save the life of the mother well, certainly not if the guidelines are telling people how to carry out abortions, because, of course, abortions are uh, the killing of new human beings. Uh, they're against any kind of uh, meaningful medical ethic. So not if the guidelines are proposing to do that. Uh, the Constitution was quite clear. What we've seen now is what's called a clarification. Uh, it's not a clarification at all. It's, it's the bringing in of a new abortion law, which runs a coach and horses through what was there before, and it blatantly contradicts the Constitution, a Constitution which was supported by the Irish populace on a number of occasions, quite clearly. Uh, so, so much for democracy. Um, and I, I realise abortion rights are accusing me now of lying, but people can go and look at the evidence and see why people voted the way they did, and they will see quite clearly that abortion rights are wrong.
on that issue. Uh, another issue they're wrong on, of course, mm -hmm. is um, when they claim that this is only about medical abortions or only allows it, but that now includes somebody who might in the future feel suicidal having an abortion. Well, again, this is not medicine. This is not a way of treating somebody who has suicide. Abortion has never cured suicidal tendencies as far as we know, although in the X case we found out that people became, uh, somebody became very suicidal after having an abortion. I think what we need to do is, is be very clear about what's going on here. We have groups like abortion rights who want abortion up to birth for any reason whatsoever. Uh, that is their agenda and they're on record as saying it. And what's going on in Ireland is That's the use true. of medical terminology and suicide. Well, people can go on the internet and check and they'll find that it is true. All right, um, all right, let's, 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 let's before, before okay. we go on to the internet, um, uh, Anthony, uh, and before we come back to you, Sarah, Peter Williams, I, I want to come back to you. Are changes needed, and they do seem to be in the debate so far, and lessons certainly learned to make it as straightforward as possible for doctors, all medical staff, to act in uh, an ethical way in situations like this, when everything is unclear? I think it would be helpful for your viewers if we actually make the, the distinction very clear between abortion and termination of pregnancy, because those are two distinct things. In the one case, abortion is feticides, when you deliberately intend to kill the fetus, to kill the fetal human being, to kill the unborn baby. On the other hand, a termination of pregnancy is simply when you're trying to retrieve the, the baby from the womb in order to end pregnancy. Now, there's never a case, not a single medical case, where feticide is necessary to save a mother's life, not one. There is, however, cases, there are, however, cases where termination of pregnancy is necessary. And under Catholic teaching, which is what has been brought up in the Savita case, it is permissible to introduce termination of pregnancy, that is, uh, retrieve the baby, certainly post-viability, and there's a debate about whether it's, it's the case pre-viability. But unfortunately, many people have tried to abuse cases like Savita or the Beatrice case in El Salvador and tried to say, well, these cases prove that you need to introduce abortion. The, the, the fact is that you don't need to introduce abortion. That is utterly unnecessary. And the, the guidelines that Ireland has currently, and had currently when Savita, the Savita case took place, was that it was permissible under Irish law to introduce termination of pregnancy, even pre-viable pre termination of pregnancy, in order to save a mother's life. If that had been, of course, needed, which in this case, in the Savita case, it clearly wasn't. The inquest found medical misadventure. It did not find that there was a necessary uh, termination of pregnancy or a terminate, or, or indeed an abortion. And it couldn't have done. What killed Savita, as I said before, was E. coli infection and actually had the various um, elements of the medical situation been better, had they give, given her the drugs that she needed to get rid of the E. coli infection, that particular form of E. coli infection, then her life would have been saved. They did not need to kill her baby. But to try to use this case, to abuse this case, to shoehorn in uh, into Irish law uh, some kind of legalised form of abortion is not only morally disreputable, it is utterly contrary to the facts. And that, I think, is quite wrong. Uh, Peter Williams, thank you. What, what, what is certain is that abortion is a global issue, but particularly in predominantly Catholic countries. The Chilean president, Sebastian uh, Pinera, uh, caused controversy this week when he praised an 11-year-old rape victim for not aborting her pregnancy. The young girl had been raped over two years by her mother's partner. The mother supports the partner. She's now pregnant with his child. Abortion is illegal in all circumstances in Chile. And these comments by the president have reignited the debate over the strict anti-abortion laws. Le pedido al ministro de salud que se preocupe personalmente. I asked the health minister to personally watch over Balen's health. Today she has been pregnant for 14 weeks and yesterday she surprised us all showing depth and maturity when she said that despite the pain that the man who raped her caused her, she was going to love and care for her baby. This is uh, a, an issue uh, uh, around the world. Uh, and, and, and Peter, this is obviously a very serious issue uh, in Chile, where the pre we've just heard what the president had to say. Uh, the risks, um, especially in some of the less developed countries, can force backstreet abortions, for example. Those are putting mothers and children at huge risks, aren't they? Mm -hmm. 
Yes, certainly. I mean, but actually, when we look at the facts, when we look at the WHO statistics of those countries, for example, in different continents which have made abortion illegal compared to those countries which have made it legal, we don't actually find that there are, there are increased numbers of maternal mortality. Maternal mortality is quite important because maternal mortality records not merely deaths of mothers from complications during birth, but also deaths from illegal abortions. But when we look at countries like Nepal, which has absolutely no restriction on abortion whatsoever, we actually find it has one of the highest rates of maternal mortality in Asia. When we look at countries like Sri Lanka, again in Asia, we find which has one of the most restrictive abortion laws, certainly according to the Centre of Reproductive Rights, which is a pro-abortion organisation. They count Sri Lanka as one of those countries. Sri Lanka is uh, counted as a country which has one of the lowest maternal mortality rates. Chile is an excellent example. In 1960, they had 275 deaths per 100,000 births. That was a very high maternal mortality rate. Since they've made abortion illegal, it's gone down to 18.7. Um, per, per 100,000 births. And that's, if you compare that to Guyana, which made abortion legal in the mid-1990s precisely on the basis that there was high maternal mortality rates, it still has one of the maternal mort highest maternal mortality rates on that continent. So when we actually compare like with like, when we compare countries that have made abortion illegal and they've affirmed the human right to life from conception to natural death, we don't find that there are higher illegal abortions or higher maternal mortality rates. Quite the contrary, we find the total opposite. And it's precisely those countries which have made abortion legal that have higher maternal mortality rates. Uh, Sarah so Malone, the issue of uh, legal abortion is a very important one, but yeah. we need to look at the facts here, and that's what okay. the WHO statistics are there for. Uh, uh, Sarah Malone, unless an abortion is necessary to save a mother's life, do you think abortion mm -hmm. should be permitted after the point where substantial medical evidence says that the unborn child can feel pain? Well, <clears throat> in that case, I mean, I think, first of all, that the question obfuscates and, you know, erases the reasons that abortions at late stages of pregnancy tend to happen. They tend to happen when there's a severe risk to the health or life of the woman or where the fetus can know is, has been deemed to be unviable outside of the uterus. These are very desperate situations for these women. And I would say that if the fetus is viable outside the uterus, that the woman's pregnancy should be ended to protect her life, her health, mental and physical, but that, that's not an abortion, and early delivery and, and an abortion are not the same. And I just want to go back to, to the point that was made about the difference between abortion and termination of pregnancy. Firstly, there isn't a medical basis for that. But anyway, um, our legislation does not mention the word abortion at all. The word abortion is not in this bill. The, the phrasing in the bill is medical procedures in the course of which, or as a result of which, an unborn human life is ended. This means that doctors can act in their patient's best interest, and there have been allegations that it would allow abortion through all non months of pregnancy, but common sense would tell you that that is not true, because later in pregnancy, early delivery would be another option, and it specifically says in the legislation that abortion must be the only way to save a woman's life uh, for, it to be, um, for it to be carried out. Or sorry, that this medical Not procedures, it. whatever they are, must only be carried out when that, that end an unborn life must only be carried out if a woman will die if she doesn't receive one. And also, with regard to maternal mortality rate, there are certainly countries that have quite restrictive abortion laws and quite low maternal mortality. Ireland is one of those. Luckily, many of our women can travel for abortion, so uh, I'm sure that that uh, affects the statistics. But there are also countries such as Canada where they have no Irish legal restrictions uh, go to on Britain abortion. To I'm sorry, their I'm actually not. Every year. Yeah, absolutely, they do. So I'm, I'm sure that would have an effect on our maternal mortality. I'm sure that we would have a lot more women dying from unsafe illegal abortion if they could not travel. Uh, and there are countries like Canada. Why don't we see that in Sri Lanka? Why don't we see that in Chile? Why don't we see that in other countries? Where this I'm is actually the case. not finished yet. If you could wait until I'm finished, please. Thank you. Um, that it, like, like ca countries like Canada, where abortion is unrestricted by the law and they have excellent rates of mortality. And the reasons for that is because the legal situation is not what affects the amount of abortions that happen. How we reduce abortion is by supporting women in crisis, by destigmatizing single mothers and adoption, by offering women real access to education and contraception to prevent those unwanted pregnancies from happening in the first place. Okay, uh, abortion right, being uh, illegal you've, you've made, you've made, a, you've made a very strong choosing. point there, Sarah. Uh, and Peter, uh, you want to reply, on? and then uh, I'll go to Anthony. So, it, it's, sorry, can I? It, it, it's interesting that she brought up uh, the, um, the, the issue of Canada, actually, because actually in 2010, in the Lancet, a study was published which actually found that the United States, Canada and Norway, three countries which have had very liberal abortion laws, actually saw an increase in maternal mortality. But regardless of this, 
the whole issue here is whether or not we affirm the human right to life from conception until natural death. The human being is given the right to life under Article 3 of the United, Declaration, United Nations Declaration of Human Rights. And that includes every human being. And it is utterly unjustifiable on medical grounds or any other moral grounds to introduce legalised forms of abortion. There okay. is no right. case that, that's, at uh, all a good where point. feticide well is necessary uh, to save Anthony, a mother's life. Anthony McCarthy, your reply? Can I... Uh, yes, I just wanted to take up... Uh, we were talking about abortion and termination of pregnancy. Now let's, let's get very clear. Um, abortion is the deliberate killing of a child or the deliberate assault mm -hmm. on a child uh, which will result in that child's death uh, as we see in the induction of pre-viable babies. Now both of those it seems to me can reasonably be called um, abortion. If we're talking about an operation on a mother like an ectopic pregnancy situation uh, a legitimate operation on a mother which has the side effect that the child loses his life we're talking about something else okay that's a side effect of a legitimate operation you are not targeting the baby you are targeting a fellow there's no medical basis for that a distinction very that's a very there, there's every excuse me that's an absolutely normal medical procedure and it's a important <laughs> philosophical principle yeah. um, and it's, that it's is called an done abortion regularly uh, so will you let me finish thank you okay yeah, An abortion is to do with the targeting or assault on the baby. The other is a side effect of another operation. To try and lump those things together is, is outrageous because principles about side effects are, of course, extremely important. It matters hugely whether you target someone when you're aiming at them in order to destroy them or you target, say, a munitions factory during a war and someone dies as a side effect. That's a completely different thing. Oh, legitimate operations on the mother which have those kinds of side effects are completely different from abortions and it's in terms of threat to the mother's life although these cases are extremely rare if there were a case if in in, in theory there were a case where an abortion a so-called abortion would save a mother's life we have to ask the question is it okay to violate the absolute moral principle of not killing an innocent human life in order to save another life. Okay, on and that question. Would you kill a mother? On that question, order, I would, want to just go, Sarah, last, po last point. Sorry, very, very quickly. Very last then, point. Would you, kill a, would, you kill, would you kill a mother? Would you kill a mother in order to save a baby? Same principle. Sarah, Sarah Malone. Well, first of all. Um, I, I do accept that there, there is a difference between a medical procedure that's carried out that causes a miscarriage and an abortion. Obviously, the medical procedure would be called whatever it's called. Um, with regard to an ectopic pregnancy, when a fetus develops in the fallopian tube or outside of the womb, um, there are two ways that you can deal with that. You can deal with that by either a direct termination of the pregnancy at sometimes, or uh, you can remove the fallopian tube of the woman and the piece of the, and the fetus that is that is with it at the, at the same time. Um, and I know that under Catholic under Catholic ruling that they would wish to do the second, even if the first were preferable, um, in order to in order for the intention to be different, because you weren't really it wasn't really an abortion that time. If you took out the fallopian tube, that was the intention, and the fetus was you know a sad byproduct. But ectopic pregnancy can be treated with direct it, abortion as well. Indeed. And and, and in that case, would you? And, uh, it would be preferable to compromise the fertility of the woman for the rest of her life in exactly. order to have a moral high ground to, on no, uh, this, the double effect of the procedure. Let's, 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 uh, and let's, I don't understand that. It's whatsoever. not about a moral high ground. It, it's about it's about not violating a principle. Okay. About uh, and, uh, I, I don't want to get into moral high grounds because we will be for, uh, we'll be talking for hours on moral high grounds. <laughs> I want to finish with a question to all <laughs> three of you. Um, uh, very briefly, mm -hmm. um, and, and starting uh, with Anthony McCarthy, who decides if a fetus has the right to live? A judge, a doctor, a midwife, a parent, or a priest? Anthony McCarthy. Well, I, I, I suppose who decides? All, all of us, in a sense. I mean, all do of we okay. choose Sarah to live Malone? in a society? Sarah Malone? To, to, to live in I would say that in the case of pregnancy, the decision can only be with the pregnant woman and between her and her medical team. All right. And uh, Peter? Peter Williams? No one, no one should have the right to decide who lives and who dies. The absolute human right to life, a humanist principle that we should all affirm, should be affirmed for every single human being, from conception till natural death. You don't have to be Catholic to believe that, but you do have to be a human being who upholds the right to life of all other human beings. All right. Thank you uh, to all my guests uh, today, Anthony McCarthy, Thank you. Sarah Malone and Peter Williams. Thank you very much.